I actually missed out on these two playing in the Asus ROG qualifier uh, back on the American server in the winner's bracket. I didn't get a chance to catch this one, so I'm really excited that's going to happen right here. Now, first TSL 6 qualifier, $30,000 event. This is our Korean server qualifier number one. In the top right-hand side, the blue Terran player. This is Byun. Taking on in the bottom left-hand side, the red Protoss. Give it up if you're cheering on parting as we get going into game number one of this best of three. So getting set up here, looking to see what's going to come out of this as we get ready to go. I'm excited. I, I do think that this is going to be a, a fun little matchup. I know Bjorn um, lost to parting the other day when he played in the Asus ROG qualifier, but then Bjorn comes out of this epic performance at the weekend at Asus ROG. And, and I can only imagine what the hell he's going to come up with right now. So, we'll see what the plan will be as this barracks will drop down onto the front already. So, Bjorn already going to get this building up. And, obviously, elsewhere, we've got ourselves a gateway setting up as well. So, part and setting up a gateway over on the main base, getting this finished up. And we will be seeing the uh, side before to come along with it. So, very standard stuff here in the first couple minutes of the game. Not going to see any proxy action, which you have to watch out for with parting. Harding is the player to kind of mix it up big time and be like, haha, I'm gonna, I'm gonna proxy, uh, proxy get you or, or something else to that effect, right? So it's not too out of the ordinary to see him uh, kind of, you know, it's too, not, not too out of the ordinary to basically be like, oh yeah, guys, so this and this and that and that, and uh, this is how things have to have to go. So um, yeah. Oh, can you guys believe that November is already over? What a ridiculous month. How is it December? Like, we've just... Time has passed, passed so quickly. And then we had so much StarCraft in November. Season finals. Asus ROG. Man. Freaking awesome. I'm so happy it's December. You guys know I cast a load of stuff in December. We've got the Wardy TV Christmas Invitational coming up and stuff. And I uh, just... Uh, happy December, everybody. Happy December to you. I know it's not even December in some parts of the world, so I know West Coast America is rocking the rocking November still, but hey, I'll tell you what. It's December here. It feels kind of nice. Feels kind of nice. All right, so we're going to kick this off as we do have the factory finishing up and an adept from parting coming through. I was going to get in here to uh, take away the first SCV. So the first SCV already going down. And now the Adept trying to shade up to the high ground here. The extra SCV in some trouble. And this is just part of being a little bit annoying. Bjorn, I mean, one Marine into Reactor is always going to do this. You're always going to be a little bit slower than you would usually like to be on this. As the Adept is actually going to get straight into this main base. And we do have the Twilight and the Robo now on the way. So Twilight, Robo on the way. If the hell are you now trying to fight this Adept off? It would be really, really nice to get rid of the Adept. But the Stalker's still here. Well, what's the Stalker going to do? Is it going to target the SCV? He's going to target the SCV. No, he's sorry, he isn't. He, he took a step forward as though he would. But actually, the Hellion was the one to take a little bit damage. So, in the end, the Hellion survives. The Stalker's pushed back. The two next Marines are good for it. And, well, now is a second Stalker here, which makes life a bit more difficult. But you can also take a little while longer before you go forward. And that's a Widowmine connection. That's a dead Stalker parting. Loses the Stalker at the front. And that Widowmine does its job. And that actually really does help a lot because that cleans up one of the big units here that otherwise would have kept up the pressure. And now it looks like we're going to go across the map, maybe Widow Mine and Six Marines. The Hellion gets repaired. That can maybe come in from the front. You can see he's waiting for the next Marines to pop. And that will be Bjorn heading across the map to put on a bit of pressure of his own. So it's all been about parting for the first minute or two here. Now it's time for Bjorn to take a, an effort across the map and to see what he can bring us. So away we go. Making our way out down to the bottom left-hand side. Some Marines coming down the bottom. Going to be getting in toward the natural expansion. It's going to be seen how Widowmine will be the biggest part of this. Because the Widowmine will zone out the Stalkers from being able to defend against the Marines. So he is going to give up a pro. And that basically says to be on time to get out of here. Because you can't fight that Stalker count. But he keeps the Widow Mine and all the Marines alive, so that's great. Now, you've got to be very careful here as well, because the follow-up from Parton is four gateways. So it's a lot of pressure coming out in the very near future. Beyond defensively, he's building up a bunker in the natural. He's about to have his first siege tank. He has to be really, really careful with units. So, and I would love to see the siege tank, like, here. 
Something that prote uh, protects from the blink up into the main base from this bottom side, but also has a bit of protection on the bunker on the natural. So I'd love to see that as that observer just sieges up and obviously high ground vision is still available. But now you don't know quite what's going on as easily. And you're going to force the warp in back at home with the medevac. So Bion is going to keep the pressure up. And this is really big because now all of a sudden as these stalkers blink around the widow mine, Bion forces, I mean, that's five stalkers that are at home. Usually everything is across the map at this point. And that's actually really painful. So this slows down Parting's attack a lot. And now look at this. Bion's going to have a second siege tank out before we even commit to the first fight here as Parting. So without the first blinking happening, there's two tanks ready. And this is going to be a little bit tough. Stalkers actually blink across into the natural. With the Raven here too, you've actually got an auto turret or two to utilize. And, and the medevac play from Bion really does just buy a whole bunch of time. It's fantastic. He kills the Observer again. So now you get rid of even more of this vision. 11 probes went down to this drop across the map, by the way. I know we don't have the workers killed up on the side of the screen. Uh, these guys didn't host the game heart mod, but yeah, there's already 11 dead. And that blink, and I mean, that's two dead stalkers. And finally, the war is going to start to save a few of them. The tank's going to move forward a little bit. Order turret to help protect this position. And the war prison micro is still very good here from parting. Another order turret. And the raven took a shot. Nelly went down. Here's the thing. Second siege tank back up already as part. And we'll try and go a different way. It's tough, though. He doesn't know what the best blink in is. He has to basically hard commit to a position because he doesn't have an observer. So he doesn't know exactly what to be doing for the best here. As Bjorn is going to pull a few SCVs. He loses a uh, medevac there. He comes back and just going to force the Stalkers to blink back down. Uh, a defense with ease, honestly. Now he'll turn back toward the natural. And Parton is still warping in Stalkers. No third base at home yet. No Robo Bay. So the transition still isn't there. He's very committed to making these Stalkers work. He's just not found the uh, the right opportunity just yet. Well, that's nice. You get a siege tank right away. But what this is doing is you're still keeping the siege tank count at two. And two siege tanks is perfectly fine for the Terran. Because two tanks basically puts you in a spot where you have one in the natural and one in the main every time. And as long as that's the case, I think you're kind of okay here as Bjorn. You can see the supply is really in his favor. Ahead in SEVs, a out similar army supply. And we are, what, 10 seconds away from having Stimpak? So this is only going to get worse here for Parton, who, well, has a little bit slow to get the Prism into position. And these Marines fighting. This is basically the last fight that's going to be really scary for Bjorn. Because now he has Stim. Future fights against these Stalkers are going to go so much better for him. And now he's got an extra siege tank count as well. I mean, one more tank to the to the roster. I really don't know if you break this anymore. So if Parting blinks in here, he doesn't have Observer, remember. Oh no, he's gonna he's committing. He didn't realize there was two tanks, and now the stimming, and that's just gonna be GG. Parting is so heavily committed. Beyond is gonna pick up game number one of this best of three. As we have in the top left hand side, our blue Terran player up one zero. It is Beyond. And of course, in the bottom right hand side, our red Protoss player is parting. As we set up into game number two of this best of three series. Let me get this one ready to go. What's up, Cobra Kush? Thank you so much for the 300 bits. Go, go, Bjorn. Also, guys, the, the Korean server is a little bit jumpy today. I don't know if you guys can see this as well. You probably can, but it's a little laggy every now and then, just kind of stutters. Um, I don't think the players feel that. I'm pretty sure that's just on my end, just so that we're uh, letting you guys know what's up right away. But um, just just so you're aware, that's something that is on my end. It's not you guys messing up or anything. Let's do see our probe. Going to move on up to the top side of the map. So probe going to scout. He came around the right side, just double checking over here for an initial proxy or anything. Um, Bjorn actually moved out to the center. Now he's going to turn back around the top. Is this something of a mind game? Okay, he's just double checking the proxy. I think he's a little bit worried about where this probe came from because he says, well, I didn't see you come in the normal direction. So if you're not coming out the normal direction, where are you all coming from and why? But yeah, it's actually just because Parting is scouting and being safe. And Bjorn's probably like, well, I've never heard of Parting scouting and being safe. Usually if a Parting probe comes in from the wrong way, it's because he's proxied something on the map. Final of Parting, that over the right-hand side. 
This is going to be seen the uh, Nexus is about halfway done at the moment. It's going to be seen our factory about halfway along and just going to be having a double gas already coming up. So double gas coming through. There's our star ports on the way up. And we see the Stargate obviously proxied up a little bit as well, so that will be aggression to begin with as this SCV finishes the command center and the Adept will not get a kill. So already a little bit nicer for Beyond here. He was actually going to have an Adept kill. This is really nice. This Hellion should get the kill, right? One shot. No way. Don't tell me the Adept gets out of here. There's no way. It does go down. So Adept kill and you don't get the SCV. So a little bit of a shame. And Beyond will be smiling about that. A little bit of an advantage to him in the early stages. Just do have a medevac setting up. The Oracle is on the way about halfway along. Just waiting for our Oracle to be finished up here momentarily. And away we go. He's going to go Phoenix behind it, which obviously helps against a lot of the Bion aggression that might be coming out. Bion just popped his medevac, and yeah, I was going to say, I'm a little afraid he's about to load up everything. Just before this Oracle arrives. Now there's a Widow Mine right here. Dead center on this mineral line. Oracle doesn't see it. Didn't even get an SCV. Or did he get one? He looks like he got just about one. That's, um... That's not ideal. <laughs> but let's just be pretty realistic on this one, guys. That's not great. So yeah, that's uh, a little bit unfortunate. There's this Phoenix hanging around. We've seen the uh, Phoenix put a couple shots out onto the factory already, so a bit of damage over there. As do you have the Phoenix, at least can come in and be a little bit more aggressive, but losing the first Oracle is really bad for you. You're already put into a really difficult position from this point on. So that definitely uh, hurts a little bit. The Phoenix show up. They're actually going to get rid of this Raven. So that's a pretty nice dive. Ravens are very hard to keep alive against Phoenix play. And well, that's exactly why. I mean, if it only takes a couple of moments. The Raven just does not stand up well to the test of <laughs> to the test of Phoenix damage. Uh, and yeah, it's very hard to just micro into like a good position or anything along those lines. Did you just see the Phoenix still flying out and around this top side? Well, Bion is obviously just sat at home and on his way towards Stimpak, getting a good Marine count up, but that's pretty much all we've got for the moment. Uh, otherwise, he's he's very much so not able to harass or anything. Lost a Raven, killed an Oracle, and uh, it's, it's okay. I mean, the damage that Parton is doing is definitely bringing this game back in his control a little bit after the Lost Oracle early. So the Phoenix making up for it just that little bit at least. They currently hang out around on the left hand side. It's just hanging out over here. It's going to be seeing the Phoenix coming in and picking off a Widow Mine already. So picking that up and just going to have our Twilight in the Forge going down in the main base of parting. So already getting set up with that. And there's going to be seeing the Medivac with a few Marines out through the top side. And looks like Bjorn will look for a little bit of harassment here as an SCV already being picked away at. Make that Three SCVs, make that four. Again, the Phoenix very good at this, just consistently able to push out damage, so doing a very good job of it. Now our Bio 4 starting to come out down to the bottom side. So a bit of pressure starting to come into play here from Beyond. And away we go. The Phoenix are... So you can move around the center, and they're going to run in toward a Medivac already. So Medivac takes a little bit of damage. And this is the problem. The Bio Army struggling to get across the map. And by the time you get here, there's already going to be a Colossus. Will actually recall because I think he knows about this medevac, so he's going to make sure he can hunt that down with the Phoenix right away. And with the Colossus here too, not really much to be done. The medevac doesn't have boost as well, so Bion gets shot down. And boy, from all of the aggression working well for Bion last game, this is the time it's all the aggression working well for parting with the Phoenix doing great and then the defense being fantastic and Bion just getting nothing done at all. In the early stages of this game, I mean, this is really, I want to say, you know, borderlining disaster right now. 
Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going wrong, quite frankly. As everything joins up together from Bjorn. So Bjorn's setting up on the right-hand side. The Phoenix joining up. We do have a bit of bio army on this bottom side of the map as well. So, looking to set up with that too. And we have about to go up to five racks, so... As Bjorn sets up his third CC, his bio armies will continue to grow, and he's already going for that kind of split push kind of damage, so looking to be in two places at once. The Phoenix out in the center, so the good news is the Phoenix aren't anywhere in particular to deal with this. Harding's army is pretty central as well, so, I mean, it can go one way or the other as Phoenix pick up on a couple medevacs trying to move forward, and Marines will stim in to try and protect, but there's only a few Marines, and the Phoenix are like, well, okay then. There's only a couple of Marines. We're just going to sit here and kill off two Medivacs. So he gets two Medivac kills. Young just did not have Marines coming out at the right time there. And unfortunately, that's going to cost him big time. Two more SCVs going down, continuing to fall. Seven workers killed as the bio army of Bjorn is going to move down the right side. At the same time, he moves down the left. He's going to put some damage out onto a cannon. Doesn't quite get rid of it just yet. And then Bjorn going to turn back around. He does catch the Phoenix. He gets three of the Phoenix now. A bit of payback, but he's also just, you know, reeling off of the seven SCV losses. I mean, that is a good bit of payback, but boy, did those Phoenix pay for themselves already. They they did a lot. They, they put in some serious work, and they definitely made this a very uh, a very strong position for parting now. Bjorn is starting to get himself up and running, right? We're up and set on... Uh, three bases quite comfortably. He's already on his way in toward ghost production, so the enhanced shockwaves on the way to improve them ghosts. So these ghosts setting up right now is a couple of well, Almer and an engineering base setting up from Bjorn in the top left. Bio comes down already, seeing a pylon picked off here initially as well. I'm just going to be seeing our the rest of Parton's army kind of moving around a little bit, so looking for something, but Bjorn's on the right side, so if Parton moves out, Bjorn will strike, and that's going to keep Parton at home for a while, so that's a benefit that Bjorn has. We're finally on our way in toward Blink, but you're going to need to deal with these drops now that the Phoenix are going to be in lesser numbers. Obviously, so far, you were able to ignore Blink because you go Phoenix initially, so they really fill the role of what you would kind of need here. That's absolutely not the case now. Now you're, you're absolutely getting past that point, so... A bit of progress as we do see the bio back up to the top side. Anyway, right, to see what will be next as these medevacs load up. Going to go around the left-hand side of the map. And this is a lot of units from Parting getting ready to push up this ramp here. So if you had Templar warping in, you're going to have Archons. I mean, the first Ghosts are not here yet. And Gun has a bunch of tanks that he just didn't ever get sieged up properly. I don't know if I like this a lot from Parton. He's killing a lot of SCV kills to begin with, but I mean, those Zealots are entering the meat grinder. I mean, they are just dying so quickly. Now the Archon's starting to come through, and maybe the SCV should want to pull away a bit. Obviously, the big part of this is that we're not seeing the tanks really getting to fire throughout this at all, and the SCV count's still dropping. It is definitely good for Parting. It just felt as though it was going to be a little bit more problematic as the Bio Army set about on this low ground here. A couple of plus eyes still firing and SCVs will go in to repair that orbital. Dark Shrine building from parting over in the main base. And just going to be seeing the Nexus coming out in the bottom left corner. As that Colossi will continue to pick their way through the orbital right now. So orbital taking quite a lot of damage. I mean, the problem, again, the problem is how do you ever really push this back? Bjorn actually had the tools, I think, to defend this. If his tanks were a little bit further forward, the same fight from Parton would have been pretty bad, because the Zealots really did just enter a, a horrible little choke point. The tank fire would have been really good to help out. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's just not how it, how it plays out here, and he didn't have the tanks far enough forward. He didn't quite have the ghosts in time to help against the Archons. And even still, Bjorn is making a fight out of this. You can see him trying to chase with one Marauder. He does get the Colossus. Well, uh, I mean, credit to Bjorn, he just cleaned up this entire army pretty much, and he's even going to chase for a couple Stalker kills who are already on Blink cooldown. I mean, that's pretty fantastic. So, I mean, Bjorn actually pulls off something of a defense. Obviously, Parkin is sat on 86 workers, so if Bjorn doesn't go soon, he's in some serious trouble. He's trying to rebuild SCPs, and he's lost 40. I don't know what the right balance of just continuing to defend versus actually just going for it is right now. 
I mean, these this bio units alone are actually going to do pretty well against what is just a gateway force, and Bjorn continues to find efficiency. Pardon should have just backed away. He needs to go home and get, you know, tech units out. You know, this Disruptor, for example, is a perfect example. Archons are going to be amazing. These are all things which Bjorn's army is not really well set to deal with and, and should not be able to deal with for a long time. But he can deal with smaller amounts of gateway units. So this is just going to be, by the way, an orbital on this space means he's going to be having to pull units every time there's any slight amount of Frodo showing up. Cleans up there, as he is now 2-2 two, two against 2-1, by the way, as well. So maintaining an armor upgrade lead in the game. And the bio army of Bjorn is maybe wanting to move down the bottom right side. Shadow Stride already building on the Dark Shrines. Again, Shadow Stride up and running. A couple of extra disruptors on the way out once again. And the backs will go out over to the left, so we'll see what they can get up to in the next few moments as we do just have Bjorn taking off some rocks. I mean, he's about 20 supply down, though, so... And that's an army, obviously. He's also down in workers as well. He, he really needs this to get crazy. He really needs this to, to kind of take place in a few different places. As he moves forward, that disruptor shot. Not, well, that's a nice split. And actually, Pauline does completely miss the army because of it. He is going to force the army to come back to respond to him. I tell you what, this army of Pauline is actually kind of lower tech than it, really, than it looks like right now. Because it's so zealot heavy. Maybe if Bjorn has ghosts, he could hit a good set of EMPs and turn this around. Like, you're going to need to get rid of the Archons pretty much right away. And these Zealots are basically going to have to be nullified as well to some extent as reinforcements show up. And again, Pawn's going to continue into this fight. I mean, right now, Zealots are trying to struggle to get past the units. And all the Archons do get hit by those EMPs. I mean, these are the fights that are going to keep Bjorn in the game. Ah, disruptors are going to be difficult to deal with, though. That's the one thing you don't have an answer for. Now you're out of EMP energy, so the Zealots are going to take a while to get through. It's not like you've been kiting your way through these all the way across the map like you had the last set. And now Pawn probably does have enough just to clean this up. Surely... As Zealots continue to push on through, the SCVs here will continue to fall. I mean, this was an early game that went very well for parting, but it took him a long time to finish up, and it had a couple of bad fights along the way. GG, and it's off. Tied up one to one in the top left hand side, our blue Terran player. This is Bjorn. He is taking on the red Protoss in the bottom right side of the map. It is parting. For game number three of this best of three. Let me get this up and ready to start. Harding is going to come along, build up a gateway already. So get that going in the early stages. So yeah, a gateway coming through. And no signs of anything too well just yet. It's at a regular timing. I know for some reason when I cast Pardon, I'm like, oh my god, guys, it's super standard. And I feel it's really important to explain that it's super standard every single time because I'm like, it's parting, right? You never know what he's going to do next. You never know what kind of nonsense he's, he's going to pull out the bag. So, um, yeah, kind of, uh, kind of, kind of funky, I suppose, in that regard. All right, well, we do have this Rax coming through here. So getting the barracks ready to go. The gateway already popping up in the main base and a cybernetics core to follow. So it will be core before Nexus. I mean, that's very standard as well. And we'll see how much pressure parting looks to apply as we will go across the map here fairly soon. I want to say a quick thank you to, first of all, VDEC for gifting us up to Ori Rock. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome back to your three-month resub. And Fear Dragon also gifted us up to Chicken Man for the 29-month resub. Uh, congratulations to me and Fear Dragon. We just went best friends on Pokemon Go. I mean, if that doesn't deserve a little mention here on stream, I don't know what does. That is some dedicated friendship right there. If I'm going to be honest with you guys. Hashtag dedicated friendship. Beautiful stuff. Love to see it. Game three. Uh, as we get serious, the Adept is on the way out. And once again, Bjorn is going to open with this reactor first. Well, that's actually not once again. He's actually been going Marine into reactor before. Bjorn really does not like Reaper openings. Like, he really does not like Reaper openings in the slightest. It's funny just how little... I mean, in a way, I like it because I don't think he doesn't like them. I think he just thinks there's benefits to the other openings, right? And, and mixing it up a lot can definitely... 
keep that very interesting. Now, with the reactor out, you should have a good amount of Marines to deal with this first adept. I don't foresee that being an issue at all. As a couple of Marines starting to go down. So the adept is going to get pushed back. And actually, only lost one Marine. The other Marine staying alive. The adept is going to stay alive as well. And now the Marines have to back away because the Stalker's about to arrive. Oh, he tries to play a game here. And he goes for the adept, which he doesn't get. And now the Stalker's here. So all the Marines just died for nothing. And that's a, uh, a little bit shaky here out of Bjorn. I mean, he should have known the Stalker was about to show up. And yet he made this decision to go for it anyway. I guess you could argue that he was already kind of just believing in the setup. And that he didn't really mind too much. Bunker goes down from Bjorn in the natural expansion. So gets that setup already. Robo facility building in the main. I'm just going to be seeing the Adept and a couple of Stalkers showing up into the natural as well. Hellions are here and... Adept already taking a whole bunch of damage is going to go down. I mean, the good thing about the Hellions is they actually won't let the Stalkers get away necessarily. But then one of them's low HP and the Stalker wasn't super low anyway. It wasn't one shot away or anything like that. Stalker's going to get rid of an SCV here. Hellion's going to go around the right-hand side. The Raven from Bjorn on the way out right now as well. It's just getting everything up and running as we do have the couple of Stalkers in the main base. Just moving around. Going to go out to the sides and just watch for any pressure coming through. I mean, obviously with Hellions on the map, you'll maybe be afraid of that medevac arriving. But the Hellions just sat out over here and as this Stalker shows up, actually puts a bit of damage onto them. The Hellions decide to, to back away a little bit. Next Marines coming out. Siege tank going to pop soon. The star pod moves off to the side. Sliding out of the tech lab position and making way for another barracks. Which where you'll also see a um, command center of uh, Bjorn setting up too. So command center of Bjorn comes on in. I mean, I don't like this setup for Bjorn. He's against four gateways here, and again, with a 3cc, you can already see kind of the lack of units he's working with. Auto turret goes down. He has to play pretty passively here. Now this siege tank's in trouble. Well, Parting's going to blink on top of this tank in a moment. He doesn't even need to. He's going to blink on the next one. Oh, I don't know how much I like that, actually, because the Marines are still in range of that one. Prism needs to kind of show up and save some of these Stalkers right now. The Raven taking damage. He's going to lose it. Bjorn derping out with the Raven a little bit. And that's a shame because obviously any amount of damage here would help. Including just uh, getting the Raven and another auto turret out to try and slow this down. Your two stalkers, oh, your two tanks down already here. And this time the four gateways blinking of Harding is working a lot better. He is starting to kill a couple of low ground units. As this time I think this tank will be able to survive as well. And he actually kills a lot of stalkers on the follow up. And that's massive. Without those Stalker kills, Bjorn is actually starting to get into a lot of trouble here. But instead, he actually is going to keep it up. We see another Stalker warping in. And that Robo Bay coming down from Parting in the natural expansion. Our Stalkers here maybe looking toward a uh, bit of a blink up into this main base. Still looking for more. I mean, now you've got a tank siege on this ram. He gets a reactor, so that's nice damage from a distance. And Parting just going to drop down the Robo Bay in the third Nexus. He's obviously on a much better probe count than when he did this in game one because he didn't lose a bunch of workers. And while, Pop, uh, while Bjorn did lose a bunch of SCVs, he was actually, because he's 3cc, he still stays competitive in economy. The biggest problem with 3cc is always going to be that your stim and combat shields are a bit later, so it takes a long time before you can push back against the Stalkers. So you're pretty much going to not go for a push here until Colossi are out. Because now we have this combo of Stalkers now attacking into the natural as well. And Parton just getting rid of so many more SCVs. This is extra damage that Bjorn cannot really allow to have happen. And is definitely becoming a bit of an issue as he blinks out. And this one Stalker, unfortunately, will go down as well. It's going to be seen in the main base. It's uh, another pickoff, right? I mean, the trades just continue. 13 Stalkers dead. Resources lost tells you the tale that it's better for Parton than it is for Bjorn. If you look at the income graph as well, you can see where Parton's forced SCV pulls. And you can see overall they're starting to settle down. And a bit of a parting advantage with third nexus up that's only going to get better 
So this is already part in favor before the third Nexus begins to mine. So yeah, it's it's about to get so much better for Parton, and he really is somewhat controlling this game right now. Plus one attack, plus one armor. Beyond gonna go double upgrades. Obviously, still rebuilt and heavily off the third CC. And as we do have, uh, bio upgrades about to kick in. I just. I mean, he's got a good tank count, actually. That's pretty nice. So he's got a good tank count. If there's a possibility of making something happen, it's probably tank-wise. And you can see Parton already sent up a couple of... A um, couple of uh, shield batteries out the front. He's afraid of what may be to come. Ah, this man, Warp Prism took some damage on the way in from the turret, but actually will still survive. So that's annoying because it's just as you want to be moving out. And obviously, you can't move out now as Bjorn. Or if you do, this Prism's going to show back up. So... Now you can't necessarily make the move across the map you might have been looking for. For the moment, he just lands on the third base and says, that'll do for me right now. But, yeah, I'm not 100% uh, not sure about that as the prism up through the top side. Backing away here. And all these stalkers in the center trying to figure out what they might want to do themselves. Temple Archives is on the way up on the natural expansion. So again, Temple Archives up and running. Parton's saying it's time for a tech switch. And add in some Archons. So interestingly, he doesn't go straight to Disruptors. He wants to go Archons first, then Disruptors. We actually see a lot of people just go straight to Disruptors nowadays. Uh, in PvT. And as Beyond chases Stalkers down at the right side of the map. Zealots are about to get here. And they're going to be able to run forward into this Bioforce. So away we go. Beyond is going to just about escape away from all of that. Dropping mules into the third base location in the Stalker Zealot army. Let's continue to chase forward. Tank shots are already good onto a few of these Zealots. So again, a bit of extra damage here. We're going to stim up, and STVs are going to pull in to try and repair this. Zealots do charge through, and we do just have Stalkers and Colossi trying to fight. I mean, all this bio going to get down the ramp, and Stalkers going to get chased away in the end. So the Colossi are going to be good to, to survive. Seven STVs die here already. Just going to see Parton's army into the middle of the map right now. Going to work around the left-hand side of this. A couple of Vikings on the way up from Bjorn. I mean, Parton's army just feels like it's too good to... to kind of be beaten by what Bjorn has. He just kills double Observer. I mean, Bjorn, if nothing else, has killed a lot of Observers in this series. He's had a lot of success in that regard. A couple of Marines already going down, so let's charge forward. The Archons initially here taking a bunch of damage as well. That's going to be seeing extra zealots just warping in from parting too. So getting those out into the center of this. Bjorn holds back on the upper left-hand side. Zealot Archon Colossus looking to get forward here as well. Armory goes down, but then gets canceled right away. I mean, you've got to really rely on the siege tanks right now. The few Vikings will do what they can against Colossi, but Stalkers are target firing them down and Parton just has a little bit too much. I mean, the Stalkers early... I would, I would say the Stalkers earlier were well held. It was the follow-up Stalkers that really did the damage. Four in the main, four in the natural. Picking up those extra SCVs really made the difference here. And that's just going to be a little bit too much. And Parting will overcome Bjorn in the first round of our first TSL qualifier. Parting gets through to the qualifying match. 2-1 victory. And he seems to be one of the guys that just has Bjorn's number. While Bjorn has pretty much...